Hey, hey, what's up, beautiful people? Hey, hey, let me pull up my notes here. I'm going to give everybody a moment to come on in, come on in. Let's see here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and dive in as everyone is joining. If you're joining me now, go ahead and hashtag for me live and say what's up. Drop me some, some emojis. Let me know you in the building. We're going to be talking, I'm going to be talking about how to set some soul worthy goals and actually begin to manifest the things that you desire this year and beyond, right? These are going to be some, some definitely some life changing, mind altering tips that I'm going to share with you right now. So let me go ahead and introduce myself. If you don't know me, if this is your first time joining me, my name is Jerrica Glasper. I'm a mindset, spiritual growth, and soul-powered business coach. I work with teen girls and conscious women leaders, and I help them really create the life and the vision that they desire around their goals and passions. And so one of the things I'm going to be talking about today is setting soul-worthy goals and actually having them manifest, being in alignment with your purpose and with your passions. And so we'll go ahead and dive in. If you are joining me live, if you can. Hey, Leisha. And who else is this here? I see somebody else like me. And Antoine. I think it's Anton, how you say it. What's up, y'all? Thanks for joining. So I'm going to go ahead and dive in. It's going to be short and sweet, right? So if you're catching the replay, if you can for me, do hashtag replay. Um, so we're going to be talking about setting those soul-worthy goals, all right? So we can all agree, right? No matter what religion you are, we can all agree that we are spiritual beings having a what? having a human experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. And we all have come here to express something, to learn a lesson, to express something, to go from breakdown to breakthrough, to share that breakthrough with other people, to, you know, whatever it is. I see, um, I have Jasmine joining. Hi, Jasmine. It's been a while. I hope you're well. Um, so we are talking about um, setting those soul-worthy goals. So I'm going to go ahead and dive in. So number one for setting your soul-worthy goals is to actually set the goal, right? Actually know what you want. So let me tell you this. Um, about five years ago, I worked with a coach and she took me through a process that was absolutely transformational. And it's something I actually do with my clients now. And that process actually gave me a chance to dream. How many of you actually take a minute and actually dream about what you want to actually visualize the life that you want that's not centered around bills and around money and around, oh, I got to do this and not limiting your dreams and your desires based on what's in your bank account, right? Because that's not real. That can be changed. So if you actually think about what you truly desire, the vision that you have for your life, you actually can set goals. You reverse engineer that. And one of the ways that you can do that, and you know, this might seem a little um, kind of different, but one of the things you can do is to think about your obituary, right? Think about in your obituary or at your, at your funeral, what do you want people to say about you, right? So Set goals that are in alignment with the difference that you want to make in the world. At your funeral, what do you want your kids to say about you? What do you want your friends to say about you? Your family, your man, your woman, your, your clients, you know, community leaders. And so set that big goal based on, you know what? At the end of my life, I want people to say this about me and start reversing, reverse engineering what that looks like. All right. So Let's see, go ahead and dive into number two. And actually, before I dive into number two, let me share this with you because a lot of people, they they do not really know what they want. And so here's a, a three questions that you can ask yourself to begin to find out what you really want. Like, what is my next move? So question number one that you can ask yourself is what idea is God, is the universe trying to express through me? Right. So what you can do is close your eyes, take a few deep breaths and center yourself, clear your mind and ask the question, what idea is the universe trying to express through me? Number two, what is ex what is seeking to be expressed in my life? What am I wanting to express right now in my life? 
right? And question number three that you can ask yourself is who must I become, right? Who must I become to achieve these goals and dreams that I've set for myself? And so that leads me to, to uh, tip number two for setting those soul worthy goals. And that is to write them, right? You got to see them, you got to write them. And this is really interesting. You know, there's a study that Harvard, that Harvard did, and they found that 3% of the graduates from one of their MBA programs who had written down their goals ended up earning 10 times as much as the other 97% put together 10 years after graduate. Let me let me say that again. A Harvard study said that they found that the top 3% of graduates in their MBA program who wrote down their goals ended up earning 10 times as much as the other 90% who uh, 10 years later. So what does that tell you about money, right? Money loves clarity. Money needs to have a, a defined goal that you write down and that you see every day. And it's just neuroscience, right? The brain, if you put it in front of you and you can see it, that keeps it in your forefront, right? Thoughts become things, right? Thoughts become things, they become habits, they become beliefs, they become actions. And so actually having your goals written down and knowing what the vision is for your life and the goals that you have is super, super important, all right? Uh, another study that was done by a psychologist named Gail Matthews showed that people who wrote down their goals were 33% more successful in achieving those goals than those who kept them in their head. So let me ask you a question. Are your goals written down? Do you, do you have your goals for this year or for your life in general? Do you have your goals written down? So if you're watching, hey, hey, what's up, James? What's up? So I'm sorry. We have Keaton Williams live. We got Miss Curly Spice, my girl. We got James in the building. So if you're catching this live, if you can, y'all go ahead and hashtag live. Uh, drop hashtag goals. Hashtag goals, right? Hashtag goals. We're going to get these goals this year. So I'm talking about setting those soul worthy goals. And so number two was to actually write the vision and make it plain, right? Write those goals down. You definitely have to, hey, there she go. There she go. You definitely have to write down those goals. And uh, so the third thing I want to talk about is to feel the goals, right? So first you have to know the goals then you gotta see the goals, you gotta write them down, and then you gotta feel the goals. And one of the techniques that you can do to feel into this goal that you have is like one of my goals, like I'm gonna share with y'all, like one of my goals is to put on a women's conference and my guest speaker is Lisa Nichols. Like Lisa is on my stage, like we're hugging, she's dapping me, like we're, we're, we're sisters, right? So that's one of my goals. I know this goal is going to happen. I've already seen myself there. I've already met Lisa. I've already like brought, I've introduced her. And so feel the goals to be real. Act as if it is already done. And so acting as, as if is a technique that I use for manifesting all the time. Because if you want to manifest something in your life, the fastest way to do it is not to wait on the manifestation, but you have to have the, the feeling of it done in order to bring it about. And it's so, it's like, that's so backwards, right? Like, why do I have to wait to feel, like, I need to wait till I get my Lamborghini, then I'll be happy. No, be happy and then get, and then you'll get the Lamborghini. It's counterintuitive, but it works, all right? So acting as if, acting as if is simply behaving thinking and feeling as if we already have something we want or that something we want to happen is already occurring in our, our life or that we already know how to do something that we really want, right? So that's pretty much all that I have for you today. Um, actually, let me go ahead and wrap up with this. So feeling into that. So let's say, you know, what if you want to achieve something and you're like, you know what? I don't know how I'm going to feel if I achieve that. So number one, I want you to identify what that thought or belief is that is getting in your way, right? I don't know if I can, you know, I'm not going to put Lisa into it because Lisa's going to be on my stage, y'all. Uh, let's say, for instance, I don't know if I could um, 
skydive, right? I don't know if I could skydive. So you're going to say, what is my belief that is making me afraid of skydiving? Maybe you're afraid of heights and maybe it happened from when you were a kid, like you climbed up on the slide and you got scared to come down. So you first have to identify what that thought is that is holding you back. And then you have to say, okay, if identify all of the things that you would do if you believe the opposite to be true of that thought. So if you have a fear around something, say, okay, if I didn't have this fear of public speaking and you thought the complete opposite of what your fear is, what would you be able to accomplish, right? What would you be able to achieve? And so once you get that belief out of the way and you can start seeing yourself in your mind's eye, achieving the goal, if that fear wasn't there, then it's time to start practicing those behaviors that you would do if that fear or if that doubt was not there. So you can role play in the mirror by yourself. You can you can talk to a friend, but it's really practicing and getting in the habit of um, acting as if you already have what you have. And so now for me, I may be somebody that's not on Lisa Nichols radar, but I'm telling y'all, me and Lisa gonna do a conference and mark my words, you're, you're here now hearing it. So it's acting as if it's putting yourself in the thought pattern and the belief in the feeling of the wish fulfilled, All right? So if y'all have any questions around what I'm talking about, go ahead and drop your questions. What's up, Ms. Hoop Who? Carla, what's up, Carla? How are you doing? Miss Ashley, I have not seen you in forever. Yes. What, James, you said Lisa and James. You ain't in this vision? Why are you trying to get in my vision, James? <laughs> no, you can come. You can be in the front row. But me and Lisa on this stage by ourselves. All right, y'all, so that's all that I have. Setting soul-worthy goals is all about, number one, knowing what the goal is that you want, seeing the goal, and actually feeling it to be real. If you are looking for someone that can help you actually start vision of having a bigger vision for your life, actually achieving your goals, writing them down, making them plain, and then making a plan to get after it, hit me up in the DMs. I would love to hop on a strategy call with you to see if it might be a fit for us to work together. Like I said, I did this before and it absolutely transformed my life. I right now, I'm from Dallas, Texas. I live in Florida, in Orlando, Florida. I went back and I looked at, so I do a prosperity pathfinder uh, process with you. I help you map out the blueprint and the bigger vision that you have for your life around your purpose and passions, and then help you create a business around that. So what I did um, five years ago with my coach was I wrote down all of these things. And one of them was that I was living in a tropical place. This was five years ago. Didn't even know how I was going to get to Florida. I'm living in Florida. Another one happened where I said, you know what? I want to mentor your mentor young girls. I want to be able to um, work with women and all of these things five years ago. Right now, I'm mentoring a group of girls at the Boys and Girls Club. So writing things down is important, especially if you want to make more money, especially if you want to make more money. So if you're catching this live, if you can drop some hearts, do some emojis for me, let me know you're in the building. And if you're catching the replay, go ahead and hashtag replay. I'm going to go ahead and keep this short and sweet. And if you guys have any questions, I'll hop into the comments and answer those for you. All right. Have a lovely, lovely evening and to your massive success this year and beyond. Take care.